Oh, my buttons are on the wrong screen, so I'm not even looking at the camera. Hey! <laughs> um... So how 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 do you play uh, D and D again? It's been it's been a while. Um, but hey, welcome cool. back to Bike Club. It's been a period of time. We have had a nice Christmas break, which was nice and fun and relaxing, mostly. Besides that arm thing. Um, yeah. Do we want to just get straight on with it? Does anyone have anything they want to plug at the top of the game? Just while we're all still somewhat fresh. I think I can do this. If not, sorry, editors. They said I could announce it this week. <laughs> but they haven't said anything, so I'm just going to do it anyway. It's already Wednesday. It's half over. Um, I'm doing the... I colored the Doom Patrol JLA crossover. Uh, <laughs> and I colored the Wonder Woman Shade crossover. Um forgot when JLA is out, but uh, let me look it up real fast. Uh, the shade is out in February. Next month? Mm -hmm. uh, justice. Anyway, that is... There's super fun scripts and super fun drawings, so... Uh, that should be out. It looks... Whoa! That's coming out on the 31st, so... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, great. Go get that. <laughs> oh, excellent. Cool. <laughs> Just if you're worried about your professional intros from now on, just let Marissa do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Comparison. <laughs> Lydia, do you want to plug your um, D, &D in, the in the crypts? Yeah, I mean, you might have already heard about this because I've been doing this for a while, but it's D, D in the vaults on April 13th, 2018. There's a charity event in Edinburgh in the Southbridge vaults, DM'd by me with a handful of players, very exclusive, very haunted, very much underground. And um, yeah, from that moment onwards, probably a monthly game. Um, it's still a wee bit up in the air, but definitely the charity game is happening on Friday the 13th, no less, from midnight till 5am, because Ooh. we make good decisions. That's and an excellent decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People That's... have been locked in in these vaults. Uh, I mean, <laughs> never mind. Go to my Twitter, half <laughs> Hermit, and there's everything you need to know sooner or later. Um, yeah, that's me. All right. Okay, and always, as always, on Monday we have Kurion, an adventurous tale, DM'd by <laughs> Stu, who is there next to me. Um, yep. But I'm in it. I'm a barbarian. Lyd Lydia's in it. She's a warlock. Jamie's in it. He's a bard. It's fun. We're going to a spooky place too, so everything's spooky lately. Why are we not doing this on Halloween? Um, <clears throat> Every day is Halloween if you try hard enough. No, that's true. You got it. So, shall we? Uh, Get into it. Yeah, I don't think I'm feeling it tonight, to be honest. Nah, I know, oh, okay, vampires cool. and stuff is yeah, just an yeah, yeah. being yeah. All right. So, when last we left our heroes, they had um, left uh, Meryl at Van Richten's tower with Esmeralda and headed out towards the Wizard of the Wines br uh, brewery? Vineyard. Um, at the behest it. of... <laughs> Erwin Martikov, who was who'd spoken to Rahal about a favor he needed um, to see why they weren't getting shipments of wine from the family's vineyard, they uh, headed down to um, to the vineyard and were met by the um, eldest of the Martikov family, who told them that their house had been that they had been ousted and they were under attack from druids and all sorts of hideous creatures and terrible scarecrows and horrible things and that this sieging had been happen happening for some time it just reached a point where they had to flee uh, and asked the party if they could lend a hand um uh, uh, you know getting their house back 
In which the party obliged. They made their way to the house. They destroyed all of the winemaking equipment. Um, bust a few walls, suplexed a few twig blights, and then headbutted a man into paste against one of the walls. And that, actually, no, before before Kerchak smashed the fit guy's face that, in wait. with his face, um, he dropped a hint, a nugget of knowledge about our beloved druid Rahal. I mean. Before then, Kerjak smashed his face with his face. So, the session ended with the body of the druid lying at Kerjak's feet and the party standing there, wondering what their next move is. Well, I think there's a few more of these somewhere around here. Mm. And I kick the burning corpse. I'm trying to remember, did he say there was another in the house or another outside? Um, he had told you that there was uh, at least one other, and as far as he knew, she was outside. Right. And was she the big. That she, she was, was the leader of this particular leader. raiding party, yeah. Well, let's go. Mm. I'm gonna have a word without him. All right. So, um, is everybody all right? Angry right now. Mm. Very, very. Is, is that not a, your usual mood? Sorry, I'm new here. Just glower. And then walk out. And then you walk away. <laughs> and then I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll follow Rahal out. All right. So you make your way back downstairs um, to the outside of the house, I assume. You're going straight out, or are you going to try and, you know, I don't know, scout where this lady is, see if she's visible? Because otherwise uh, you're just walking into a lot. Of vines. Um, Are these there lights upstairs? still around? Yeah. Is there an upstairs window? Yeah, there's, there's windows. Um, there are no lights around where you are, guys are right now in this house. You seem to have done a good job at clearing them. Um, there's shattered remains from where Ker uh, Kerchak suplexed one. There's just like destroyed, bent, twisted ones from the tidal waves. And there are upstairs windows. Okay, can I, is the one that looks like out into the back, into the vineyard? Yeah, uh, I mean, basically the the upstairs landing there's like a like a balcony that goes all the way around, so you can pretty much see everywhere. Right. You know, can I all across. look out into the fields to see if I can see yeah. her? Yeah. Uh, roll me a per perception check if you wouldn't mind. Uh, that's going to be a fourteen plus. Uh, fourteen. Plus eight. So that's uh, twenty-two. Okay, yeah, fucking hell. You um, you easily spot this woman, and you see her. She's stood on a small rise, um, out amongst the um, the largest area, and you see her. She is holding a what appears to be like a, a gnarled. Um, dark looking staff above her head and she seems to be channeling something else with her hand and her head is thrown back and she seems to be in the midst of performing something okay I just want to yell back to the others she's out there in the field on a dais can I see how far away she is she's a good distance away um, she's not like where you can immediately just run up to her Yeah, she's a bit she would into the She's field. within 150 feet. No. Okay. However, um, Volgus, you do also spot crouched behind a a sort of bush vine, um, concealing herself, but also keeping an eye on this woman. You spot a big hat. <laughs> um, I, oh no. And. Uh, <clears throat> Meryl's out there as well. 
from the staircase, I go, what? Well, her hats. I saw her hats. <sighs> Come right. on. Let's go before she, I don't know, murders the vineyard. I don't know how one would murder a vineyard. You know, but I'm sure she'll find, find a way. way. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Where there's a Meryl, there's a way. <laughs> uh, okay. There's so a Meryl, there's Mayhem. A the couple of moments later, Meryl, I, Meryl, you hear creeping up behind you, um, or are you just walking up to her? No, I'll, I'll, I'll creep. I'll creep. Okay, I don't, I don't need you to roll self for this. This woman is so lost in the moment. She's not really looking at you guys. Um, uh, yeah, you well, hear creeping I, up behind you. Your errant party members. Well, I am trying to untangle my foot from a bush. <laughs> After a walk. going well. I'm just going to burn the bush away. Like the vine away that's Mm -hmm. With Farmer Toad, you just sizzle it away. Can I roll to see if I scream or not? <laughs> no, not <laughs> it's just really fucking like... scary. <laughs> You'd have to roll for that. You could just do it. If you want to scream, you can scream. Scream but... or yelp in surprise or, you know. I just don't know if I'm in it. Just, it looks like I scream in surprise. <laughs> <laughs> How far are we away from... The druid. You're a bit closer now. I'd say within about 150 feet of her. Okay. Can I pop up from the vines and see if I see if she's still yeah. chanting away? So you you uh you do like a little above the vines, and you see that she is now in the midst of what appears to be like some sort of dance, and um you see that her um, robes that she's wearing are very tattered and made of animal hide, and she's got like ropes off her, and um her hair is like. Um, matted and knotted and, and in like just clumps and it's flying around as she's like just is in it, the midst of this whatever. Is it raining it's... right now? No. Well I mean there's it, always like a light mist but it, it's, pattern, it's sort but it's of... not heavy rain. Right but the, the the vines are damp right? Yes they would be yeah. Okay I'm gonna fireball her. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh roll to hit then? It's a saving throw, uh, dexterity through. saving throw. Okay. Twelve. Jesus Christ. Okay. So this is a uh, seventeen, by the way, is my saving throw. Da da da. It's gonna fireball. Uh -huh. Fine. Is it fine? Is it? Oh, okay. So, 10, 21. 17? Babe? What? You said spell save is 17? Yeah, she rolled a 12. No, I know, but how do you get a 17? Sorry, because um, we have. The it's eight plus five plus three. Or am I? Yeah, five plus three is. Yeah, three is your proficiency. So it's eight plus your proficiency, which is now three, mm -hmm. plus your uh, wisdom for Volgus. I think it's wisdom for druids as well. Yeah, well, but that's 16. sixteen. Yeah, I can't good, count. Good. Yeah. Uh, good. <laughs> I was doubting myself there for a second because I'm like, no one maxed out. Mathematics is hard. I know. That's 32 points of damage. Did she disappear? So you watch as Volgus goes <laughs> and he uh, stretches out a hand and light um, seems to just crackle through his arm and it looks like his arm just totally just rends itself apart as light floods from it and as he points towards the woman she just goes up in it like a huge <laughs> and nothing remains I said I wanted to talk to her <sighs> um what the fuck honestly I wasn't expecting her to go down that easily I just 
pat him on the shoulder. <laughs> I want to well, stomp well over mm-hmm. and see if I can, from what's left from the remains, see anything that points into direction what she was doing. Okay, so Rewise. as you stamp over to the woman in the thingy, you see that all that remains of her now is ash and the staff she was holding. Uh, ba ba <laughs> well done. And I just cast my last third level spell so I can't even speak uh, with dead. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, she needs a mouth no, for that, no. anyway. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Give me a second, and I'll walk get over to uh, the hall and look really disappointed and say, "There goes my plan." <laughs> See, I'm agreeing with Meryl. That's how bad it is. Well, um, like I said, usually these swords don't go down so easily. They did make a pretty big boom, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I examine the staff. Yeah, okay, so um, uh, um, yeah. Rahal got there first. So are you picking the staff up, Rahal? Okay, so you reach down and you see that this staff is... It's its more like... Less like a carved staff and like a tree branch that has just been like ripped from it. It's black and it's gnarled. And at the end is like little branches that are all like twisting off like hands. Um, I, as you pick it up... You can feel that there is something to this staff. It, it's not just your standard state-of-the-art staff. It's there's something else. If I cast detect magic, would that would I find out more? Uh, yes, it, you would be able to tell. This staff is definitely magical. Yeah, but would I find out what it does? No, no that's identify. that's identify. Ah, no. Which is an arcane spell. Anything else that remains from um, this? All else on her is like a small pouch in which there's a couple of gold coins, um, a collection of I teeth think. from humans and animals. Um, but that's about it. Everything else just went up in flames. Can I use my tracking skills to see if there's any sort of extra information I can detect? Yeah, sure thing. Roll me a survival check. Um, as well, Rahal, as you pick up the staff, you notice that the the blights that had been in the vineyard stop moving. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Um, R- Meryl, you can make out some tracks that lead away from the vineyard, um, out towards the woods, opposite from the way that everyone came in. Well, I want- see y'all! <laughs> and I start following the track. <laughs> um, so Meryl starts walking, and as she does, she passes by a blight. And you all watch, potentially <laughs> cringing for a second, waiting for the swipe. But it doesn't come. It's just stood. Hmm. Well, I think we found out what she was doing. Hmm. I want the blight to follow Meryl. Okay. Um... See if I you, can command them. You stand there and you think about the blight following Meryl, and it does. Hmm. Can I tell yeah, that the blight me. is following me? Yeah, you'd be able to hear it because it's like. Can I make the blight imitate Meryl's undoubt- undoubtedly swagger when she walks? <laughs> you certainly can. <laughs> And it starts. I'm gonna turn around and be like, "What the flip flops?" <laughs> Did you just say what the flip flops? What is yeah, that? Yeah, we're trying to not curse on here, right? <laughs> no, no, you can go. You can curse whatever the fuck you yes. want. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that one just really caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna duck and see if it ducks. Do you wish it to duck, Rahal? Yeah, it does. It's just gonna it's gonna do whatever I do. Um, I am just 
I'm gonna goof around with the blight for a little while. Just like, um, I'm gonna do a little dance. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do Mime in the Box. <laughs> okay. <gonna> do... So, <laughs> Paul goes, can I check out how he watches Meryl? is like, <laughs> to a blight, which then goes, Ooh, ooh, I want to draw my sword and see what it does. I, you should just copy exactly what she does. The, the blight wants to get this, but then reaches around for a sword and goes. Mm. <laughs> Disappointing, but I'll just keep walking in the woods with my new friend. <laughs> okay. I want to mean to catch up in Volgas and say, I don't think she realizes it. I mean... <laughs> if she does, it's... <laughs> I feel it's more entertaining this way. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but I, I'm not I, quite sure how I feel about an evil creature like that following us around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you talking about me or the blight? <laughs> I was about to say that in character. You stole my <laughs> That will be a mystery that remains unsolved. Oh. Insight check. <laughs> Does the stuff and the feel distinctively evil yes that stuff as it looks as evil as it feels like this thing is not it's not good no well you're not wrong this this is not in any way shape or form good or natural um I can control them I don't think I should but I can. If you can control them, you can destroy them. Can I see any of the other blights around? Not just that one? Yeah, are, the, are, are um, they all imitating? Or is it no. just that one? They're all stood frozen as statues. Is Meryl making friends with her new friends? Is she animatedly chatting with it? And mm -hmm. bonding? Tell it about my life. Asking it about its life. Not I want to see if I can destroy that blight. Gone. Just that one. Just that one. Okay. Do you know what? Fuck it. Rule of cool. You're allowed. So, um, <laughs> you take the staff, and as you take it and you focus your energies on it, you feel just a hint of cruelty just seeping in. Just that little hint. And as you point it towards the blight and think about destroying it, it just <laughs> crumbles. Yeah, we can Real. destroy it. Oh, what the fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Good. Do it for the rest of them, and then we can destroy that staff. That was the plan. I hesitate only a second. <laughs> okay. And then I destroy the rest of the lights. All right. So, the the temptation to stay and to use this new strong weapon that you have you can have you could control an army that crosses your mind you think what power i could have before you put your hand in the air with the staff and concentrate on destroying um these creatures and it takes a moment as if the staff is almost trying to convince you change your mind what could you do with this power but you stay resolute and the bright blights just crumble around you. There's a, there's a sound, um, an echoing sound of just crumbling uh, wood and twig as they're all destroyed. Done. I will not lie, that staff could prove useful, but at the same time, At the same time, well, look what it's wrought. Sorry, Kojak. I was pausing for dramatic effect. Uh, like, leave the sentence dangling. It creates uh, tension. Right, okay. Thank Normally a, a pause is the middle. You just stopped. Just imagine ellipses. Yes. Oh, um, yes. Three dots. Ellipses. How do I even know that actually? But 
It's a common mark of druidic. <laughs> <laughs> Every sentence in Druidic ends with three ellipses, so it's, the language sounds really ominous. <laughs> so, you're stood in the middle of the field, still holding the staff. Meryl is mourning the loss of her new flip-flop friend. What do you do? Would I... Would I know if there is any way of cleansing stuff like this? You wouldn't know. I will Would ask I? the cleric. You could roll me a religion check. Oh, I'm bloody good at these. If we could uncorrupt the land, perhaps the staff could... I don't know. Actually, roll me a history check as well, Volgus, because you might know what this is. Oh, I'm just going to laugh at the point of you saying you could uncorrupt the land. You're not from round here, are you? No, I'm not. But land is not supposed to be like this. Well, so we can undo it. I, I definitely yeah. don't know what on the religion check because I got a natural one. What? What? But on the history check, I got. Oh, that's way better. Uh, that is uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Hard diggity, damn. All right. right. So you know that this is from a. Give me a sec. You know that this staff is made from a limb of a Gultheus tree. And you know that this is not really something that can be cleansed. It must be destroyed. Right. <sighs> I just remembered about that branch, that staff. <laughs> <laughs> so natural <laughs> transition. That just no, oof. it was the most naturalist of them all. The uh, realization of the blights. Uh, it is. Can I extrapolate a bit on Gulfius tree as Stuart? Yeah, okay. go for it. Yeah, uh, a Gulfius. It's part of a Gulfius tree. It's what spawns these blights. Um, it's a tree said to form from the blood of a vampire. Huh. Obviously, a vampire is not exactly a friendly figure. Fair enough. It can't be cleansed. <sighs> it is born from evil. Its seed is evil. It Fair must enough. be destroyed. And with that, I'll just kind of light a flame on my fingertip. See, I was about to hold my hand out. <laughs> I sort of look down at the woodsman's axe. Snuff the flame up. By all means, do your work. Like how uh, thick and chunky is it? It's I'm like thinking a... I really want to do it over my knee. It's it's like a tree branch, but to Kerchak, that's basically a stick. Can I try and snap it over my knee? Yeah. You just do it. You don't even need to roll a check. Kerchak is so small. Yeah, yeah. Um, that you basically, so um, Rahal hands you the staff and you take it in your hands for a second and you can feel you're not attuned to the land or divine energies or anything. You know, good and evil, and like vague concepts to you, but you know that this is, this is bad. This is not a good thing. Um, so you bring it down over your knee like Bane breaking Batman you <laughs> snap this thing in twain and as you do there is a, a gust of wind that blows through you and it's almost like a scream but there you are two halves of a staff fair enough I was expecting more Well, does mm, the vineyard feel any different at this point? Um, not noticeably, but if you know, you get the feeling that if there were any more of these things hiding somewhere that he would not seen and commanded to die, that they would be like, done so. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we can tell them that their house is fine 
No. Well, except for all the little um, places where we made it not fine. I will go. Forget about it. that. Was fix. the grid? I will go fix what I can now. The rest of it, well, I think a lot of it was unusable anyway because of the druids. Also, where's Meryl? They do need to be able to make wine. That is the most important thing. I don't know if we can fix the uh, the equipment. I can do my best. That would be great. Thank you. I'm just going to rub my hands together and go mending. All right. <laughs> but also, that. where's Meryl? But also, where is Meryl? Oh, God, I forgot about Meryl. <laughs> Volgus doesn't care. Yeah. Volgus is happy oh. that you can't see Meryl. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I'm following those footsteps. Uh, what can I see? Okay, so you um, can see what appears to be tracks leading away from the vineyard uh, towards a, a wooded area um, that is quite dense and thick. Is what you can see so far. Unless you're like full on going down the trail and just leaving everyone. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to, like, run into the forest, but I'm not really going to look into the forest. Okay, okay. You're going to dawdle. Mm-hmm. You're going to not your stroll. Come on, thing, load for me, please. Thing goes great. Thing goes great. It, it doesn't. I love it when the DM is like, fuck, I gotta load all these characters. <laughs> no, it's not characters, it's a, a map. Okay, so... Oh, whoa, Strahd is Are here? Why is Strahd in this? Fuck! <laughs> boom, 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 what would welcome. you do now if I just went, sup, bitches? Strahd von Zorovich is in the house. I like your uh, flaming shirt. Like, I, my instinct would be... The Pretty flame, spicy. But Meryl's instinct, I think, would be the flirt. So... <laughs> to flirt. Of course he would. <laughs> you gotta play the character. <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta play the character. That's right. Okay, so, um, you can see that the woodland is continuing and it's quite thick and dense. But as you, as you make your way through, you can see amongst the trees, there are um, almost totems and decorations hanging from branches made of bone and wood and some are painted some are decorated with tattered pieces of cloth um they're not Ooh, consistent along a path nice. but they're just you're not familiar with these these are not something you've seen among uh, around Valaki before these are quite new and different okay here's the thing meryl is an idiot the question is, is she enough of an idiot to be able to put together that there's probably still more druids there? Is she smart enough to know not to go wandering? I mean, she is from Barovia, so she knows that the woodland is dangerous anyway, because there's all sorts of manner of creatures in there, from zombies to wolves to... You don't even Since know. when has Meryl cared about dangerous? Yeah. Are you trying to get her into trouble? <laughs> yes. I think God, it's just like it's just a question of how stupid she is. She's really stupid. Is the <laughs> She's like really stupid. Um, I think I'm gonna try to sneak around a little bit and see what I can figure out. It won't be good. <laughs> okay, so this uh, sneaking around this woodland is gonna take like quite a while, like half an hour to 45 minutes of, like, good sneaking. This is, like, quite nice thick woodland. Yeah, I'll sneak around. I mean, they're the fixing the house. Volgus right? like, mend everything. Yeah, meanwhile, <laughs> cutting back to the vineyard, there's Volgus just casting mending just, like, a minute at a time, just <laughs> doing a foot at a time. Just re looking really <laughs> exasperated by it all. Okay, uh, Meryl, roll me a stealth check. Yep. Stealth is, uh, just stealth there. Uh, 11. <laughs> 11. I'm okay. leaning over to carrot check at one point. She's not back yet. She's probably dead. Hmm. How long do we wait until we start looking for her? I feel like now-ish, probably, but I'm not entirely sure. We 
should, shouldn't we? Yeah. And I look up into the sky and do I see a, a massive bird flying around anywhere? No. No. Um, notably, there isn't any fire either, which is, you know, new. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mm. Meryl usually, you know, where Meryl is, there's a fire. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we should probably go look for her. Yeah. I think I didn't use my wild shape last time. No, you didn't, no. So I'm going Dire Wolf. Alright. Trying to track her. <laughs> sniff, sniff. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rahal, you are. Uh, roll me a survival check. With advantage. The Barovian version of sea shanties. Uh, it's a 17 plus. Doesn't have survival there, so I have to look that up. But. Uh, Survival is what based? Wisdom. Wisdom. Cute. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Yep. You're easily. You can easily pick up Meryl's scent because she wears quite a distinctive perfume. Um. It's called brimstone. <laughs> you are e able to easily pick up on her trail, and before long, you find her creeping along um, the the bush in the woodland. Um, she is, however kind of moving with a twig in front of her face <laughs> in an attempt to be stealthy but she is crunching every leaf hitting every twig <laughs> she's um pretty obvious but you yourself you spot like these totems these charms hanging from trees and they kind of they look familiar these are dru druidic these are like gifts and wards I'm gonna leave my wild shape just now. Can I just sit down and uh, just tug on on her coat cloak a little and? Yep. Okay, Meryl, you are so preoccupied <laughs> with creeping forward and being the stealthiest you possibly could be, you don't quite notice the direwolf come up next to you until she starts gently tugging on your cloak. Yeah. Eight foot long direwolf. <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite a feat, actually, because her maw, her toothy maw, is quite large. And so then awesome. there's a half arc behind. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap my arms around her neck and be like, I knew you'd come for me. <laughs> While she's doing that, can I just, like, pop off the hat and then put it on me? Yeah. What <laughs> is a very bad thing to do. How could you so steal sneaking my hat? Off. I'm not sneaking off. There was a trail. We wanted to make sure they were all gone, right? Well, don't just run off without telling anybody. I sauntered. <laughs> you had plenty of time to follow. I just found just the hat. I as, was coming back. My response. Did you find anybody? Very rude. Uh, well, I found something. There's these uh, strips of fabric, and some sticks, and there's some footprints. So I might be a little early to tell uh, the vineyards they can come home. Fair enough. We'll. We'll keep looking then. And I just looked at Rahal. It's like, da da. Yeah. Um, I'm lifting my paw and go. And then I run off to get Volgas. Okay. May I have my hat back, you horrible man? I am lovely. I don't know what you're talking about. You never Most... speak. In many places, you'd get killed for taking a person's hat. In many places, you get killed when you wander off alone. I live here. <laughs> I take off the hat and I put it on a branch. 
<laughs> oh my god. How... Let's see. I think I'm only... How, how high up a branch did you put it? Not too high. Just high enough. Yeah. That I can't, like, just reach it? You can, you, yeah, high enough track. that you can reach, but it'll be a stretch. Just maybe, maybe like, a little hop. I'm gonna... I'm gonna call Chester. Okay. I'm gonna get Chester to get my hat. Which is smarter, Meryl or the bird? <laughs> the bird. Yeah. The bird is actually smarter. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my god. Okay, so, um, ooh. Hello, ooh, camera. Yeah. What right. just happened then? Um, so, Meryl lets out a, a low whistle and Chester comes swooping in. You send him to get your hat. Ooh. Okay, so he swoops down on the branch. Chat, square in the eyes and say, I should tell him to drop bio on you. I just look at the rest of me, like, like I am the epitome of cleanliness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the meantime, Rahal, you have been hauling ass to get back to the uh, the Matikov's house, where you find Volgus with a pinion and a feather duster. <laughs> I just turn a uh, pause on the carpet. <laughs> I step off the carpet and make um, whining how noises. Much, and... How much have I managed to fix? You've fixed a good chunk of it. Enough that the Mayakovs probably won't be too offended. The main wine barrel, the vats were, that were destroyed with the tidal waves and stopping the druid from poisoning them, they're gone. You can't fix them. They're just too huge a, a, a trick. But you could do the minor damage. You could repair windows and, and the wall Kerchak smash through. To the window. To the wall. To the wall. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I, I have been cleaning and polishing the silverware and shining the window. And, you know, I've got a penny on that says, I heart wine. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's just a cleaning montage. Yeah, you know, it's one of the ones that says, it's got I heart wine and it's like the front is like a naked person. <laughs> just with I heart wine on the undies. The, the wolf just... Uh, and <laughs> and he starts tugging him as he does. I take react. the penny off and hang it back up. And then I run off. Uh, no, I want to clamber on your back. <laughs> You're like the size of a horse. It's quicker if you run. Is so that uncivilized? Is that possible? Yeah, physically. Yeah, yeah. Die wolves are huge. Die wolves are a large very creature. Very rude. Yeah. No, it's fine. I'm gonna just grab on. Crack it. be like, yeah. I'd be like, it's quicker this way. Okay, yeah. so Rahal, you feel Volgus, who is a full sized human man, clamber onto your back. He is lighter <coughs> than perhaps you thought, but he's still a person. And uh, as he grabs a fist of your fur to hold on, you're like, <sighs> but. You... I'll probably grab some spines. Because die wolves are spine. Die wolves yeah. have spines. And you grab some spines, and he catches a bit. Most of the vertebrates have spines. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> Am I incorrect? Also, I'm only 180 pounds. At six foot two. That's still a lot, though. Right. But for a eight foot long die wolf. Anyway. <laughs> Rahal, with her Volgus package, now runs back to Meryl and Kerchak. You hey, arrive Bruce. as Meryl's hat is being placed back on her head by a large vulture, and Kerchak is getting the absolute fucking stink eye from Meryl. Oh, you're not dead. Well, what now? I start sniffing for tracks mm -hmm. leading to actual living people, druids. There's a... You can see now that the um, the charms and and the uh, the undergrowth is now kind of beaten away into a sort of trail now. Um, and as, as you follow it for a little while, it starts to... Um, it leads you through the rest of the thick woodland to um, the base of a hill. And it looks to be covered in dead grass and big black 
black rock cairns jutting out of it. Um, the the sky above this hill is is like notably dark and ominous, um, and you see as like lightning is like crashing down around. Um, and you can see to the west, um, the woods and the sky vanish behind just a, a wall of fog. Really unnatural. It's just like a wall. Would I know about that? Oh. Yeah, uh, Volgus, you, you have before. You've not done it often. You've done it once or twice. Travelled to the very end of the realm. You've gone as far as you could go. And that is what that looks like. Well... This is the end. You can go no further beyond that point. Are there any living people around? Um, other than our folks? You can't see them at the moment, but you can hear chanting at the top. I start growling. Whereabouts? Point. <laughs> point. I do the point again. And they are uh, atop the hill. Like beyond your vision. Unfortunately, I don't have any more fireballs left. <laughs> oh, you guys need us to go look at something? I think I have a friend that can help. The wolf nods. Okay. I'm gonna the go Volgus send. nods as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking send. up there thinking how much effort would it take to get there? I'm gonna send Chester to go look look at stuff all right okay um so what can chester convey to you like can chester tell you things i can't remember um i guess he's a, a companion and not a familiar so uh birds. i i think like pretty basic ideas like uh Vultures are super duper smart. Mm -hmm. You can teach them to count. So I can at least get a number of people from them. Okay. Uh, so you send Chester up. And Chester um, does a, a circuit. And, and checks it out. Yep, what's up? We know Chester can count. Can Meryl? <laughs> can Meryl read? Is this a Grox Meryl definitely cannot read. What's her What on earth did you roll? Huh? Intelligence. Six. Oh, for speculation. It was six, but then I leveled up and I had to make it seven because, like, that was really bad. <laughs> well, those seven doesn't change anything. No, but next level up, I can at least get to negative one instead of negative two, so. <laughs> mm. She's really stupid. She's I don't so understand serious. how she's so. I don't know how she survived so long. I think it's just like pure instinct. Pure blind luck. Okay, so <laughs> Chester does a couple of circuits and then comes back to you and conveys that there are 12 people atop the hill. A Meryl 12 or a Chester 12? Chester 12. Okay. And he, I think... How do I... I'm going to try to see if I can formulate this into a simple question. Uh... Do they all look magic? You get like a a call back in response that sounds like no. I don't know what vultures actually sound like. Yeah. I can just think of them from the jungle book. <laughs> they all sound like members of the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. Do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? Yeah, the four <laughs> magic users at the top of the hill are called George, Paul. <laughs> Buddy, I love you so much, but you gotta not be there. <laughs> so, we know there are 12 figures. Meryl knows there's 12. She hasn't uh -huh. got that through the Meryl filter to you guys yet. Oh yeah, I guess I should tell them. I mean, they heard me ask how many are there and if they're magic. <laughs> yeah. Right, I, I assume so we saying, can okay. see the vulture pouring 12 times. Or yeah. What, what, 
Yeah. Taloning. Taloning, yeah. Okay, I think there's ten people up there, and they're not all magic. There are definitely around that number, yes. Just sort of limbering up. I am... Um, low on magic right now. But I have a little bit of gumption left. I mean, we could make camp. I could f still fry them alive, most likely. I just have to get a bit closer. I can hit them a lot. Yes, you can. Does anyone have any healing potions? I do. How many do you have? The one. Okay. Uh, Wolfie Baby, how many do you have? I growl. <laughs> And um, then I, I I gesture. Fuck's sake! I don't want to lose that thing. Cause I'm so halfed out. <laughs> um, I'm gesturing. Um, I I lift my paw. <laughs> That's all I. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. She just gives you a blank stare and says, "Okay," and then looks at Volgus. <laughs> what about you? Healing potions? Yeah. None. I don't believe Volgus has any. No, I don't think he does. I thought we were going to say, them. I don't believe in them. I don't <laughs> believe in healing. Uh, can you cure wounds? I'm I not nod. that kind of cleric. I nod. I nod. Okay. Um, um, yeah. You're uh, your damn wounds. I'm not that smart, and this looks pretty dangerous, so maybe we should rest? <laughs> um, can we see the people? Like, can we see... No. The hill is quite a steep hill. And there are the... Um, it's almost like a crown atop the hill. There is... Because um, it's quite a, a big hill. Um, there's the black rocks that are jutting out in, like, cairns that have been built up. Alright, I'm going to spend some time to ritual augury. Okay. And say, if we go now, what will be the results? Okay, so you spend ten minutes, throw your bones around. Um, whoa. Rude language. By club. We need did you to guys rest. Miss me, by the way. <laughs> we did. Yes. We need to rest. The bones say that this is dangerous. Right. Well, we don't know um, who they are or why they're there. Rahal, if you shift back, can you shift into something else right now? Something smaller to scout. I nod. And because. We need to know if this is. We need to know if this is urgent. So, I will do. I, I will come out of full form then. And say. Yes, I have one. One shapeshift left. Not many spells. I can scout it out, but then I will not be able to fight in. In this form. I understand. But if in doubt we could rest a small amount, perhaps restore some yes. stamina. Well, if we do that, I suggest, Meryl, if while we're resting, your I would feathered love friend, to keep watch. Thank you. Well, I was going to say your feathered friend uh, regularly fly around and let us know if they move or not. Because if they move, we might have to end the rest a little early. I would also appreciate if uh, you could... Uh, if you would be so kind as to have Chester look out for me if I, when I scout. Yeah, Chester can help you out. No problem. Just in case they you want to take me. mouse form again? A twitch. Best um, to go even smaller than a mouse. It was rat. But I think this time, 
I'm going spider. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think Chester can take her up there. It just might be a little hard for him. No, to I think I'm. I get it. Yeah. yeah, if you can just drop me, I think, as a spider, would I take much fall damage? Make yeah, a little if you were dropping, parachute. If you were dropping mm -hmm. from a height, then you would probably just bounce like... straight out of spider as you hit yeah. the ground. There's trees or like pillars or something over there, right? You can throw spiders off the tops of buildings and it doesn't hurt them. Yeah. Yeah. That's they, the thing. they can't hit terminal velocity. The smaller, it, but... yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. The smaller yeah. the things are, the the less fall damage. But, but do you realize there's a spider back in you, the you upper can... atmosphere? You're a spider, not a paraplegic. You can just walk up there. I was about yes. I'm. If it might, it might just take longer, but I can just spider climb up. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a long climb. Chester can take you. I didn't mean there's nothing Maybe to say that up. you have to be a spider from the bottom of the hill. Yeah. You know. I want to get up there halfway, then go spider, or or go spider. Chester can take me halfway up. Okay. Um, maybe. Yeah. Is how big is giant spider? Is that like uh, giant large. Giant? That's large. Yeah, that's like an eight foot spider. No, <laughs> ah, please <that's> not. <sighs> um. Yeah. That's a spider the size of those ogres you fought. Nice. A spider is the same size as a direwolf. Christ. Ugh. That's not then. This regular spider it is. The same size as the frogs that the uh, knights of the swampy rose ride. Alright. Okay. So it does take a little bit of time, but Rahal, you make your way up to the top of the hill. And what you can see from there is it's quite a horrific sight to you. You remember growing up, you remember the rituals, the dances, the the sacred events you would have where your tribe would gather and you would dance and you would sing and you would, you know, revel in, in nature's glory and, and, you know, do your druid stuff. This is a twisted, perverted version of that. You see pairs of people on the hill dancing dancing around in a circle there is um, a small like a dais upon where there is a large muscled man and he is covered in blood his head is thrown back there's another druid above him and pouring a bowl of blood down upon him and chanting and singing behind them you see strung up like um, like deer waiting to be dressed you see two people um, pale and covered in, in red from their necks. Behind them, you see a terrible giant statue uh, made of wood. Let me just get the description because it's really fucking cool. You see... Um, it appears to be made of tightly woven twigs and it's packed with like black, dark earth. And it's a statue of a towering cloaked man with fangs. Can I see any victims that are perhaps about to be sacrificed? No. The two are dead. That's all you see from here. Um, but everywhere around this, this, this hilltop is clear. It's like this hilltop is like a... Um, a gathering place. It's not where these people live. Did we see their homesteads around no. the hilltop? And can I understand what they are chanting? Is that a language they speak? Um, it's it's a form of druidic, um, but it, it's not singing about yeah. um, good things. It's not singing about. The, you know the beauty of the land it's singing about darkness it's singing about death it's singing about bring us destruction bring us decay it's not so bad that's how mushrooms grow 
I'm going back down. Uh-huh. And convey that to my dear party members. These you... druids are out of their fucking mind. Human I... sacrifice? Human sacrifice? I should... I'd noticed that previously, but um, is this a bridge? Are they doing something now? I don't think so. I think this is a regular chant. They are worshipping what I think is Strahd, a vampire. Right. Can I describe the statue? Does it? Does, and would would Volgus know if that's him? I mean, Volgus is is lived and grown in uh, in Barovia. You know, cloaked guy with fangs is pretty on par for Strad. That's you know, it's one of the nicer yes. descriptions of him. That's usually one of his guises. I think. I don't know if there's imminent danger. I do know that it's a gathering. They might be gone tomorrow. I don't know if what they're doing is going to be causing trouble right now with the vineyards free. But mm. I, can't, I can't understand that stupid language they're speaking. It's not... But you say there's a statue, therefore they'll be there for a little while at least. Right. I think we can rest for a little while at least. Perhaps it's best that we... There is... Did I count them? Yes. And I have counted them? There's 12, by the way. That's two more than 10. And they were all druids they all seemed to be capable of. Yeah, um, um, there was... There were more lithe figures, but there were some who were definitely huge in musculature. There were... Big scary dudes and more lithe. I mean, still somewhat muscled, but there were some that looked more magicy, and there were some that looked more punchy. Mm. It's a druid clan. There's some will be capable of magic. Some will be capable of just breaking your jaw. The good old way, good old fashioned way, Kerchik will appreciate. They'll probably break the hand first. <sighs> must be nice going through life like this. Anyway. <laughs> um, I... My suggestion would be that we camp as soon as we can, as close as we can without rousing suspicion, and try and follow where they've gone in the morning. Go to their settlement, and if they're here all night, they'll be sleeping in the morning. And we can catch them while they're asleep, torch them out of their homes. It's one way of doing it. You're appealing to the orc, orc half of me there. Do we really have to kill all of them? Yes. Why? We haven't Always. been hired to kill them. Yeah. Well, I suppose it would put me out of business a little. Yeah, followers, followers of Strahd, they do not... In, I mean... You weren't there, but they don't seem to be the ones. Well, I'm fairly raise, used to grizzly the type scenes. You can reason with. I'm fairly used I'm, to these grizzly scenes, yes. No, I mean you weren't there in the sense of Meryl wasn't there when we were in the vineyard. Oh right. Yeah. And tried to. Uh, they're mad. They're utterly mad. I I think I don't think we can take them right now. If we're going to do anything, I think whatever we do, we need to rest. Whether it's here, whether it's back with the vineyard. Easier to defend, but we need to keep watch. Yes. Are any of the cans open? No. They're all sealed away. Right. Can? Mr. Replace uh, can. like a like a barrow, it's a Yeah, like burial mounts. Burial mounts. Oh, yeah. oh! yeah, cans. C A I R N. Mm-hmm. Yes, can't. C A N. Uh, I can take first watch. I can take second watch. Third. I'll go last then. All right. And as the party beds down for the night of rest, I am going to bring us to a quick break. 
Uh, so grab a drink, go pee, go do whatever you want to do, and we will meet you back here in like five minutes. See you soon. I feed these animals.
Hey, thank you for that waiting for that break. Wow. <laughs> hey, we're back after a break, which apparently didn't do me any good because my brains have gone. Um. So, we're you back. have bedded down for the night um, to keep an eye out on the hill, which uh, Volgus, you would actually know, is called Yester Hill. Um, yes, sir. That's you true. notice that this ritual goes on uh, over the period of your watches goes on for a long time well into the night and into the early hours of the morning eventually they just sort of does as, it go sorry to interrupt does it go on for, how long like hours wise does it go on for like hours and hours there's periods where it calms down but they seem to be in a trance they're not they don't seem to be fatiguing they don't seem to eat or drink during this they are just vessels just moving and performing these rituals um as it comes to the uh as as dawn is breaking as morning is broken um they appear to have just laid down on the ground and are just sleeping wherever That's a face. How close are they to me? Fucking hell, give me a sec. A long ass way away. Uh, Over 400 also, feet away. Right. I say we sneak up there now and take them before they can do anything else. Okay. Also, a side note, because I was last to take watch while everyone was asleep, Kerchak was war painting up, just because. Just with mud? Yeah, pretty much. Whatever I can find. <laughs> Do they resemble any strange druid markings, but kind of something offensive and vulgar, perhaps, accidentally? Sure. Because there's not. a couple of lines it... intersecting where they shouldn't, and you're going to like... Other than that, it's mostly like orc tradition or um, like bear imagery. It's it's what it's what Kerchak thinks is bear imagery. I imagine it's just he's just smeared his face. And... You know Look, the cool. okay. You know the line on 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 the right side of your forehead says I'm a penis, right? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. It says well, that it you're says... a penis. You specifically. Oh. Wow. No, 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 literally, in quotation marks. I mean, hold on. Now it... Mm, mm, and I, I draw up and like... I mean, now it says I'm a badger, but it's better, I think. It's a bit less. Hey, listen. Like the badger, the no, chat doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Indeed. I, I, can, I can delete it again if you'd like the other version. <laughs> <laughs> control Z, Control Z, Control Z. <laughs> That's what I actually had in my head. But I can, I mean, if you if you prefer it the other way, um, it should be intrusive. It just becomes more like combat stuff. I just smudges it, <laughs> ruining the fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, so, let's see what happened here. I, you're to... a bit quiet, Marissa. I don't know if you're on a movie mic. Try it again. How's that? A little bit better. Oh, sometimes it just hates me. I know that feeling. Right. Let's move up closer. Uh, um... Strike hard, strike fast. A lightning war. I can do lightning. That would be good. Though they might see that as a good omen. Judging by what was happening last night. Well, they can do that. They won't survive for a very long time, too. That's true. Uh, I can also make the earth erupt where they are lying. It becomes difficult to rain. We might have trouble entering through. I won't be entering that. Regardless of what happens. We're looking at our badger here. I just don't. I, I don't reference it. Just, I mean, 
mean, you're the one that turns into animals, so I'm just I assuming you mean you. I'm just assuming you mean you. It's a CR 27 creature, the honey badger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get burnt. <laughs> I think on a throne behind Asmodeus, there's a honey badger pulling the strings. <laughs> I feel like we should save what we do until we get closer. See what we're dealing with with our own eyes. Uh, not that I don't trust you, I just don't know what state they're in after that amount of ritualing. We should keep one alive at least to ask. I'll do my best. Uh, banishment is mostly indiscriminate. Hmm. All right. If you're gonna, are you gonna sneak up the hill, or are you just walking yeah. right up? All right. Stealth yeah. checks. That's not bad. Ah. Yeah, I'm taking that. Nineteen. <laughs> Sixteen. Eighteen. I hear nervous chuckling. <laughs> Feral. Uh, ten. <laughs> ten. <laughs> Okay. The morning light catches the silver nose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you make your way up uh, the hill very quietly. It's kind of shaped like this. Oh, like, a bean. like a bean. Like a bean. Here's Ad also wants to sort of branch off so that I'm coming at it from a different angle from okay. everyone else. Um, however, like... Um, this is where you're heading, this is where the druids were. There's like a circle of stones. There's only one way in, one way out. With a path. A path, a path. A path. So, okay. What order are we walking in? Yes, I would like your marching order, if you wouldn't mind. I am way at the back. I am way at the front. I'm... Uh, I can be behind Kerchak. Yeah, me too, center. Uh, okay, so you stick low to the ground and take care, uh, take care to watch where you're treading to move slowly and quietly up the hill. Um, as you reach the top, you look past the rocks and can see that they are still just sort of lying around. Some are uh, sort of grouped together, some are cuddling up, some are separate on their own. Um, there's a moment where one of them seems to stir and stretch up and as if they're moving and waking before they settle back down to sleep. You are now stood about a hundred feet away from the slumbering druids. You can see the large uh, wooden um, effigy of Strahd looming over them. The uh, Their victims are still hanging. I just want to form the light in my arm and just look. I'm going to do the earth thing. Um, as soon as they start doing time. stuff, my intention would be to bolt okay? into the middle. I mean... Yeah, I'm gonna... If, if you begin to make casting magic signs, I am just gonna yeah, let yeah. that fireball I loose. I was... I was yeah. Alright, so face. Rahal... Do your earthy business. It's um, a 20 foot cube. Okay. And everyone in the area must make a dex saving throw. Okay, I'd say you'd get like. It's a 20 foot cube, that's a pretty big cube. Um, it's four squares. Why yeah. four squares? The only problem is this map, every square is 50 feet, because that's helpful. Um, hmm. That's a huge map, jeez. The Yester Hill is big. It's a big fucking hill. Yeah. Um, I w if I can get some of the spellcasters, if I can see them somewhere on the ground. Yeah, okay. There's, there's a sort of in. a section where it seems to be mostly the druidy types, are, uh, you know, the, mm -hmm. the casters are grouped up. Um, you would be able to take out most of them from that. You get a couple of the, the stronger types as well. So yeah, I'd say you get about half of them in this cube. Nice. Is it yeah. a saving throw? Deck save of 16. Okay. Yeah, I have six dice. 
Okay, that's a save. I rolled two natural 20s. <laughs> hey. Wow. Um, that will be a save. That's a fail, that's a fail. That's a fail. Okay, so you... Um, three of them take full damage, three take half. 26 all in all. Okay. Give me a second, let me just get off this to this. Where's my frickin' notebook? Ah. Ooh, the peak. Sorry. Mm. My bad, my bad. I think that was Skype more than you, to be fair. Mm, probably. Because that was like an electronic peak. Okay, so um, three pass. So they took it was twenty six down to thirteen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's 26. Uh, 26. 26. Okay, so uh, you watch on as Rahal extends her hand and she um, she mutters something in Druidic. You don't quite understand what she's saying, but you understand that she is, she's speaking to the earth, willing it to, co uh, to obey her commands. As she does, um, the earth beneath the slumbering druids buckles and cracks and boulders rise up and you see their bodies go <laughs> break upon the uh, the, the uh, rocks at which point the entire camp um, jolts awake um, and the the large muscle ones groggily reach for their weapons the casters stand up to cast um, I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative no. uh, the fireball Oh, the fireball, yes, the fireball, yeah. That's yep. dexterity saving for, for all of them again. Okay. It's a 20-foot uh, radius. 20-foot radius? Oh, shit, that would get all of them. Okay, can I can I catch Strahd with it as well? The Strahd figure? Um, no, they are, like, they're not very, they're not, like, up against him. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. We'll burn it down after. Okay. I don't know why. Fail. Oh, that's initiative. Oh, yeah. It's like, why am I rolling it down? It's not here, initiative. Pass. 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 That's four pass. Two fail. On okay. first six. Let me just roll another six. Fail. Oh, fail. That's three sixes. Fail. Fail. Two pass. So four in total pass. Um, eight. Uh, nope. Wait a minute. I can add six fail and six pass. Hey. Uh, 32 again. 32. And it's half if they... um. If they succeed, yeah. So half to um, 16. Hey, it's base eight. Woo. Okay. Explosions. Okay, so um, with the fireball, two of the casters are just up in flames. You hear screams as they are snuffed out. Um, oh shit! Hang on a second. Nope. That make that three of them gone. Dunzo, yeah. fucking out yeah. of it. Um, Spellcaster power. Ye. You see the the larger, um, the larger men and and women. Um, they take the wounds and they cry out in pain, but it seems to fuel them. And they stand up in their anger. Ugh. So give me a second to roll a fucking shitload of initiative. Sorry, guys. Fuck it out. Oh my god! I think we might have won this combat. I think we might be <laughs> counting your chickens, boy. Well. Okay, 25 to 20. At 20. 
Of course. Um, Bogus. Uh, 20 to 15? 18. 16. Okay, so that was Rahal on 18. Mm-hmm. Kerchak on 16. Mm hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, 15 to 10? Uh, I got 11. 11 from, um, blah, 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 blah. Meryl. Meryl. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. That then leaves us with... <laughs> right, okay, top of the round is Volgus. Uh, so you say they're about 100 feet away. Yes. All right, I'm going to move up 30 feet. Mm-hmm. And then can I see the ones that I assume are spellcasters? Yeah. Um, are there any of them left? Yeah, there's um, at least two left that you can see. At least two left. Uh, how wounded do they look? Uh, pretty wounded. All right. Um, I'm just going to set things off here with a sacred flame. Okay, oh, Sacred Flame. The most wounded looking one. Yep, go for it. I had to save him for it. Oh, it is, of course. Yep. Should now I cast that spell enough? Uh, bu- 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 16. That is my DC, so. So that's a pass. Yeah. So that's no damage. No damage, nope. Uh, and then, um, as a. Bonus action, I am going to, uh, I believe it's a bonus action. Uh, where is it? I've got too many spells. I do have this one prepared though. I should just sort it out into the ones I actually have prepared. Yeah, I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, Rahal, you watch as Volgus extends his hand, the crackle of magic energy through his glove emits a bright light in the uh, the cracks down. Um, it doesn't seem to have an effect on the person he was pointing at, but that moment of distraction is what you needed for then... To uh, cast Moonbeam at third level. Ooh, okay. Uh, again, on what remains of spellcasters. Okay, ten foot diameter, you will get them both. Yep. And that's three to ten. That is uh, nine damage. Nine damage. Okay. No wait. Sorry. Four, four, three. Um. Eleven. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I go on. And as a bonus action, I will turn into a brown bear. Oh. Girl. While we're animal memeing and animals memeing. All right. Okay. So Rahal um, shouts a word in Druidic to the heavens. And as she does, she pulls a fist down and uh, comes down a beam of bright energy, which basically evaporates the two spellcasters. <laughs> Who are gone. Fucking done. Um, <laughs> get out of my initiative order. Get out of here. Um... As she brings the energy down, she lets out a roar from deep within her, a sound that shouldn't be able to be made as she transforms into a bear and lands ready to go. Um, At that, one of the um, large druids dashes forward towards Volgus, who has moved forward to the group. Um, And he will... He's wielding a very large but very crude looking axe. Okay. And he is going to attempt to hit you. After he makes a wisdom saving throw. Yes, indeed. Two! He has to attack someone else instead. I'll lose it. Okay. Uh, Well, there is no one else really close to you. So that attack's gone. All right. Yep. That's that fucking the just... barrier of magic around me makes him decide no. Let's not do that. <laughs> he sees the shadow and is like, oh no, maybe not. It's the smolder, let's be honest. Kerchak, this fool has just run up gloves. to the group with a great axe. Are you going to stand for that? No. 
and neither is he. He's not going to be stood up for me. Clearly. Go on then. Yeah, I'm going to run straight up to him, uh, rage on the way. Yeah. Also on the way, appreciate the fact that uh, you know Rahal's a bear now because mm-hmm, bears mm-hmm. are cool. Um, and then yeah, both swings um, at this dude, uh, and fuck it, reckless. Because it's reckless. fun to do that. It's fun to do that. All right, yeah, yeah, let's do this. Do it. As a barbarian, there is no attack that isn't a reckless attack. <laughs> Ooh, hmm. Uh, 19 before the plus 8. Yeah, I think that might, might hit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That, that's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> uh, that's good. I used the red one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, that's 15. Uh, 17 points of damage. On the first hit. Seventeen With... points of damage on the first. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, go again. Uh huh. <laughs> Not as good, but that's gonna be a total of uh, uh, twenty-four to hit. Twenty. <laughs> yeah. You see, Kerchak, this guy is dressed like you. He's not wearing armor. He's mm. got um, you know, like instead of tattoos, he has marks like. Scarred into his flesh, yes, scarification, and that kind of stuff. He's he's a meathead. He's like a. Well, um, I hope he likes uh, my axe because that's uh, a twelve on the d twelve, plus the five for strength, plus the uh, rage damage. So that's twelve plus seven. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah, that's nineteen points of damage on that one. (laughs) And I just get right up in his face. All right, okay, so you run up to this guy and you've seen them, you've seen this pathetic attempt to get you with his axe. And you're like, bitch, please. And you come running up and you take a leap and as you do, you just embed the axe straight into the middle of his skull. And you see him flinch and there's a moment in his eyes as panic as a single drop of blood drips down his face. And as you pull out your axe, a bit of brain, a bit of skull flies off it, and he just to the ground. Nice. Sounds nice. good. Turn to coach Yeah. Just the the <laughs> solemn nice one nod. Nice. Which I wow. don't really appreciate because I'm raging. <laughs> yeah. So Volgus, you're like, good job, buddy, and Kerchak is so like blind with rage. He's just like. <sighs> Where's the next one? <laughs> yeah, but because there's like so much like dirt and muck and like just darkness around the eyes, the whites of the eyes look even more intense. Yeah. It's like um, the uh, Royal I'm Marines aesthetic. advert. It's like... <laughs> Kurtzel looks pretty intense as it is, but mm. he is like in the murder zone. Oh, I'm so right. glad I have Sanctuary on right now. <laughs> Okay, Meryl, you've watched your party members run forth. You've seen Kerchak absolutely destroy a dude. What do you do? Uh, how many How many people are left? There are four people left because your party are monsters. Yeah. Uh, and they're all... That guy did die, right? Yes, he is dead, dead. Dead, dead. Okay. Um... I'm gonna get in longbow range, mm-hmm. which I didn't write down how much it is, but you can get in get... range. That's no problem. <clears throat> I'm gonna get longbow range and just pick one that looks kind of weak, mm-hmm. and then I get uh, two attacks. Yep. Um, and then it says bonus with same weapon. Does that mean I get to shoot three times? Uh. No, that's no. if you're dual wielding. Okay. All right. So then I will just shoot twice and let's see what I can do. Okay, let's do it. Nope. <laughs> what was it? And, uh, it was the bow adds my dexterity. Yep. Uh, it was twelve. Ooh, that's so close. <laughs> I know. And proficiency. In yeah, and your proficiency well. bonus as well. So it's your die yeah. plus three, plus three, plus your dexterity. Oh, in that case, that is uh, uh, fifteen. 
Oh, yeah, you yep. do it. You hit him. Is that right? 12 plus 3. Yeah, 15. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then roll for damage. Yeah, you or do. do you want me to see if, if both hit? Um, You can do one after the other, whichever you prefer. So that one does uh, 11 damage. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And then I do another one. Oh, that was 15 plus 5, so 20. Yeah. And then yeah. that one does... Uh, five damage. Five damage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Woo. Um. So, Volgus and Kerchak, you are stood. Volgus, you're in the middle of going good job to Kerchak, and Kerchak's too busy going ah. And you feel two arrows whiz past each of your heads, like, whoosh, whoosh, and you look ahead and you just see one of these tall, um, muscular. You see, it, it's a woman, and she's wearing like patches of hide stuck to her. And you watch as in a horror as her chest just gets pierced by two arrows and she sort of recoils and then she goes <laughs> and it's her turn and she's gonna she run borrow me it. she's gonna uh what she does is she swipes down in front of her with her axe and uh, breaks the arrow shafts and comes running towards you kerchak and she's gonna attempt to hit you and she's gonna do it recklessly well she already had advantage Oh, she did, so she's not going to do it recklessly because she already had advantage. Um, I mean, if she wants to do it recklessly, no, that no, gives me... No, 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 fam, don't even worry about it. It's 20 okay. to hit. Yeah. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you take... 15 slashing damage. Raging, so half to seven. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's basically gonna like, cause she's almost as tall as you are. She's a very tall, broad, muscular woman, and she's just gonna get in your face and be like, <sighs> you know, get that whole. As she yeah. brings the axe down, she's like, cool, cool. Okay, which will then spell on her friend who has seen seen this transpire, seen how she got hit and didn't fall down. He gets renewed with a vigor, and he lets back his head and he shouts like a, a huge war cry. Imagine like Xena's war cry, but a bit less dramatic. It's a bit more guttural. Um, and he is also going to run forward, but he doesn't have an axe. He has a sword, a, a big sword. Um, at this point. Um, it's gonna basically block up the entrance to this circle, so it will be the one that just hit Kerchak, this guy, then Kerchak and Volgus. Um, so he's gonna come for you, Volgus. Do you okay. still have Sanctuary up, or is it a one? It's last for a minute. Alright, so it's a wisdom saving throw. Yep. Failed. So he has to hit another, which is now Kerchak. Yep. Um, he's gonna do it recklessly. No, he doesn't need to, because you reckless attack. Fucking hell. Um, 15 to hit? Uh, yeah, hits. Okay. Uh, that's 10 slashing damage. As in total or range? Uh, to total, so 5 half cool. for your raging. Okay, and that brings us then up to Volga. So you have almost been hit twice, but your magic saved your butt. Um, so... Of the people left, do any of them look particularly more leadery than the others? No. Um, you get the feeling that these guys are basically just grunts. These are the do we people. accidentally burn alive all of the leaders? <laughs> Wasn't me this time, was the moonbeam. We both share our no. glory and Susie's no. ire. No. No? Okay. <laughs> My NPCs! You're killing them all! So the ones, Have the you ones managed to do any attacks with the druids? The How many of druidic druids? Nope. How many of them are around me currently? Two, Two. of them. And that's how, many of them. how many of them are left? Um, wait a sec. Three. Three of them. Okay. How many of them are within 30 feet of me? Um... Wait a second. Oh, fuck. Hang on, I missed one off the initiative order. Rip. Give me a second. There's real professional damage. Mm. I thought that was going to be an accidental. Oh, fuck. There's actually 12 more of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, <laughs> no. 
And there should all be druids. one between Meryl and Kerchak, but I am a dum dum. Okay, um, that would be. They, they were, they were very into the ritual last night. And yeah, I mean, just they, you know, they'd been hitting the hooch. Yeah, hooch. Hooch. Red hooch and. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to pretend that guy was a bit slow to wake up because he maybe had been, you know. He's been hit too. That moonbeam shine. Yeah. Too so, hard. Too hard on the blood, you know. Yeah. So currently, there's two within about 30 feet. Of you. Only two out the of one that's what? Four? Right in front of. Um, of three. Like, three. There's only three left. Because I killed the other one. Oh right. Well, in that case, then there's two out of three. It's not bad. Time to channel some divinity. Radiance of Dawn. Constitution saving for. Oh Christ. Oh wait a minute, these guys are fucking hench. Pass. Mega pass. Okay. I still take <clears throat> half damage though. <laughs> uh, that's uh seven, twenty two half to eleven. Eleven. And that's radiant damage. Okay, that's no, that's no problem, no problem. Okay, uh, so... And then I'm going to cast Sanctuary. Okay. Sanctuary! <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Um, so, what does your channel divinity look like? Oh, it's great columns of light erupting from the ground under each person within 30 feet. Okay, okay. So they, uh, they are bathed in a burning white-hot uh, light. Um, and you hear like a, a small uh, 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 but as the light fades you see them both stood resolute looking maybe a little bit singed okay so um, Rahaf I am going to attack one of the big grunts surrounding Kerchak okay. can, uh, can you get in there? you can attack yeah, I was... a friend you could you can like temporarily occupy a space to attack and then not as long as you don't end your turn in a, a familiar space you can do that oh, in fifth no. edition i believe i don't know so i, I will move. let you attack through the meat shield of kerjack and volgus that's fine i mean i am a bear a big bear i yeah. can move i'll yeah. move all right you will take then... two attacks of opportunity but you have sanctuary up yeah sanctuary so. me all right so volgus is moving thank you Fail. Fuck. I thought Volgus was at the very back, so I thought I was right next to Kerchak. Yeah. Pass. Okay. So it's gonna try and hit you. Warding flare, disadvantage. <laughs> you fucking shit goblin. Um thirteen miss. This is <laughs> <laughs> oh. Does one of them tries to hit me, the other one just <laughs> as I walk away. <laughs> Alright, Rahal, you have a space now. I am going to attack first with a bite and then with a claw. That is a 24 mm -hmm. bite. Yep. That is, so I'm biting down with 8 piercing damage. Okay. And then the swipe will miss, unfortunately. Because natural one. Okay, okay. That's alright, that's cool. Um, so you jump forward to the one that looks very heavily wounded from um, from several wounds accrued from very several um, very several from several different attacks. Uh, you bite down upon the exposed leg and just tear a chunk of thigh off. It leaves a huge gaping wound, but they're still standing. They barely seem to register it. They are lost in the battle rage. Are you staying where you are, or are you moving, or? Um, would I be in the way of Kerchak, someone else? I kinda you wanna... wouldn't be in the way of Kerchak, but if Volgus wanted to get back in and punch anything, you would be. But I don't no. know if Volgus is going to no, do that because he's like noodles. No, let's do the back-to-back -back buddy cup thing. My strength is the same as Meryl's intelligence. Hmm. So smart. So strength. Alright, okay. So, uh, after that, Kerchak, you've just watched as um, Rahal come forward in her bear form, which you already think is fly as fuck, um, and you see her just tear a chunk of this dude's leg. No. That's your chance. 
Uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a swing my axe yeah. recklessly again. Which one you uh, hitting? Uh, I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. I'm gonna hit the woman because she was the one that came up first. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, um, that's gonna be an 18 before the 8 plus 8. Yeah. So. Mm. Uh, Marge. Uh, that's gonna be a 9, 11 points of damage okay. on the first one. And then the second one's gonna be at her as well. Uh, that's gonna be a 24. Yeah. Cool. And that's gonna be 17 points of damage. <laughs> Alright, calm down, Jesus. Um... <laughs> this is what I do. Ah, buried. Okay, so you are swinging wildly and recklessly with your axe. Um, you just want to chop this woman into pieces and you were taking, carving great chunks of her out but she's still standing and she isn't showing pain on her face if anything the smile that she had on her face has just gotten wider uh, although there is like a trickle of blood coming out of the side of her mouth and her nose and her ear she's very very close to the line but she is still standing strong as if nothing had happened just makes me smile more too <laughs> speaking of however the one guy at the back who was maybe a little bit slow on his feet is gonna get up um and run towards the group but however he's kind of blocked off so he's gonna throw a hand axe at you okay check and he will miss wildly this dude is having the worst hangover ever he does have advantage he still very much misses. Does the hand axe land near me? Um, yeah, it would just it whizzes straight past Kerchak's head. Like, <laughs> by a good couple of inches. This guy, I think maybe he might see two Kerchaks. And he's gone for the wrong one. <laughs> if I use the hand axe, if I throw the hand axe back at him, mm -hmm. can I... Well, I can just do that. <laughs> You can do that, yeah, you it absolutely can do that, yeah. Since it's a throwing weapon as well, you can even use dexterity. So you well, can, I have so roll as good if you're strength and good your, dex. Yeah. Roll as if you're hitting with your bow, basically. Okay. Uh -oh. I guess I'm a little drunk too. <laughs> that was only 11. Oh, unfortunately 11 the, doesn't hit. So. The sights are off on this hand axe, let me tell you. <laughs> Not this missile line. So, this kind of now from an outsider's perspective looks like Piggy in the middle with Kerchak in the middle and a hand axe instead of a ball. <laughs> <laughs> but, Do I um, get a second attack with a different weapon? Yeah, you get a free item of, um, interaction, so you could like throw the axe and be like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> bow. Okay, I want to do the bow. <laughs> okay, 17. Yeah, that is. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, and that's only four, six points of damage. Hey, I'm gonna play it off nothing. like I'm distracting him with a hand axe just to like shoot him with the arrow. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the um the the hand axe whizzes past Kerchak's head and lands at the ground near you, Meryl. You you pick that up and you know do a little test of your hand and lob it back. It misses by an a, just a fraction. It's very close, but it does miss. In the meantime, the guy's gone, huh? You've pulled out your bow, got an arrow, knocked it, and, and taken advantage of that moment of distraction to just pin him right in the collar um, with an arrow. Um, okay, so that will then lead us to the, um, the guy with a bit of thigh missing who is going to, in retaliation for that, try to chop your head off, uh, Lydia. Mine head? No, no mine head. Roll that again, because that bounced out of my box. Uh, I have that effect on people. Perfect. It's going to miss. What is wrong with me and my dice? That one's going to jail. Um, so he's, he, he brings back his axe. Are, are he, you sure it will miss with a bear has, you know, 11 AC? I rolled a three. Never mind. Oh. Um, nice. He nice. he brings back his sword uh, and moves his leg to step forward to go in for the chop. But as he does, 
the wound just pulls up in a bit more, and he's like, Ugh! stumbles and poof, misses. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, ooh, it's like a roast chicken pulling the leg off a roast chicken. Always with the food references, <laughs> right? Hungry um, boy. <laughs> At which point, his partner next to him, the woman who got Boromir, um, is very much focused on taking Kerchak down. So she's going to pull back with her axe. You did a reckless, right? I did, yep. Um, that was going to be a 19 to hit? Yep. Okay. Three! No, wait, four, because I can do math, so two. <laughs> Nice. Two slashing damage. Tickles. This guy suck. What am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that is end of their turn, Volgus. So these two at the front, they both look wounded, right? Yeah, they're like so close to dying, but right. they're not showing it on their faces. They're still resolute. It's just in their body. You yeah, can their see. bodies and are the, the, slower. The, the, the drunk guy. The drunk guy is is wounded, but he's not as bad as the other two. All right, so I would like to cast uh, Scorching Ray, but I want to aim to take these two out non-lethally. That sort of shock of pain that just wipes out their brain brain and knocks them out rather than okay. Well, you Scorching pick... Ray is a um, or is it a? Cone? It's an attack roll. Oh no, it's it's free. It's free attacks. You pick targets. Oh, it's burning it's hands this thing. Raise. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's free raise. So I want to hit both one in each of each of the front ones, mm-hmm. and then the third one to the guy at the back. Well, the guy at the back, that's lethal. But the two front ones, I'm aiming to basically take limbs out and with the shot of pain just... Just knock them, yeah, make them Wipe them out. Alright. Yeah, so that's free attack rolls. So, for the two at the front, mm-hmm. did any of them reckless attack? No. They didn't need to. Well, technically one could have, but I forgot. That's fine. Um, so that is one of them is definitely going to hit because it's natural eighteen. Yeah. The other one though is nine plus eight. Yep. So that's what's nine plus eight is sixteen. That's a really good hit. That's gonna. Okay. Yeah. So those two both hit, and then the guy at the back. That's cocked. Oh yeah, natural sixteen. So... Okay. Okay, so to the one on the left, that's eight points of damage. Okay. Seventeen. On... Seventeen. I'm sorry, I can't do maths. It's difficult. It's stressful. Uh, the one on the right is ten points of fire damage. Okay. And the one at the back is seven points of fire damage. Right. <laughs> yeah, barbarian rage your way through fire damage. I can. You can. You're a bear. You're a bear in orcs clothing. Oh, okay. Um, So you do forth your your Scorching Ray, uh, intending to knock the first two out. Um, (laughs) Bloody good, damn it. Um, (laughs) But you expect that burning pain to knock them out, but unfortunately they're still standing. No, you can white man blink at me all day. (laughs) What? They're still standing, bitch. Okay. Uh, the one at the back uh, screams a bit as he starts to burn. Um, he's still alive. Uh, Rahal, you have I'm now gonna... a very singed man in front of you who's missing a bit of leg and has been hit with an axe. I'm going to keep fighting him. Okay. Hopefully taking the leg off but not killing him in the process. Okay. With oh, right, you wanted 20. one alive. Yes, 23. 23. Yeah. That's a 7 plus something. Uh, 4. 11. Yeah, yeah, that does it. Okay. So you, um, taking advantage of uh, the moment where he kind of stumbles as he pats himself out from the fire, um, you latch on again to the leg that you had ripped a chunk of and you pull and you rip and you feel a horrific pop as his leg just dislocates um, and he screams in agony before his eyes roll back and he drops to the ground unconscious it's like Denifo with the chicken 
Can I use my claw attack on the woman, or is she too far yeah. away? No, she's like, like next to the dude. Lovely. Let's okay, cool. Yeah, 16 plus 5. Yeah, hits. 21. And that's... 2d6. That's 8 plus... Another four, yeah, of course. Twelve damage. Twelve. Okay, do you want to keep this one alive or kill her? Alive as well. Okay. With a claw. Hmm. I just basically want to sock her in the... In the <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So you, just... um... If a bear could punch... <laughs> and a big bear paw just whacks this woman at the side of the head. And you feel like the impact, and it's like you swear for a second you almost feel her brain jiggle inside her skull as you just follow through and she lands on the ground and you kind of just stand on her head a little bit. And she falls to the ground unmoving and unconscious. Is that the second time I'm kill stealing everything from Kerchak? <laughs> okay, Kerchak, you watch as Rahal dislocates a man's leg and nearly pulls it off and then bats a woman unconscious in front of you. There is one left behind you about 30 feet away. I'm not so mad because you did it as a bear and there's, there's a level of respect there. Um, you said the other one's 30 feet away? Yes. Well, I can move 40. So, I'm gonna... Uh, he's not really been damaged all that much. Oh, he has. <laughs> oh, he has. Oh, well, in that case... Um, it worked last time, so I'm going to run up and I want to attempt a suplex on this one as well. Okay, yeah. Roll to attack. Just because. Uh, oh no, it was a grapple last time, wasn't it? It was a grapple, that was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm so, going to contest this. What is it's it just barbarians strength, isn't it? Yeah. And they're kills stolen. <laughs> Don't even. Still sorry about it. Does it count as an athletics or it's just strength modifier? Uh, it's athletics. 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 Music. Music. What did you roll? What did you do? 17 on the dice with a plus 8. So that is... 25. Yeah, that beats him. Okay, so you run forward. And the man is stood there. He has his legs apart, ready to fight. You slide under his legs to get to his back. As you run full sprint. A full slide underneath, you pop up behind him, grab him and just whack him into the ground. Um, I can't remember what damage dice we rolled for that. Me neither. Uh, improvised attacks usually a d4. Yeah, d4. Plus strength on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, seven points of damage. Seven. I mean, unarmed attacks are just one plus strength. Oh, right. Okay, so you um, grab him around his stomach um, with the full strength that you have and you just whack over backwards and there's a sickening crunch as he lands on his neck. Um, but he's still awake and breathing as you let drop him to the floor. Uh, I imagine that would be my action. If that counts as an attack, I have an extra one. Mm, I mean, <laughs> I feel it like kind that's a bit of more was an attack. Mm. I will let you have a secondary attack if you wish. You can like curb stomp him or something. Yeah, that was the that was, yeah that makes sense. All right, the roll to Do hit. That. Roll the squish. You know what? I'm gonna reckless this just because <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> It's not. Uh, it could have been better. Um, what am I adding to this if it's just a stump? Um, proficiency in strength. <laughs> well, uh, uh, 21. <laughs> I don't even need you to roll damage for this because you had like two hit points left. Um, so, Kerchak, you, um, you see as you drop him to the ground that he's still awake and you're like, fuck this, I'm not having this. You jump up in the air, both feet and squish his head caves in like a watermelon your boots are just coated in brain and viscera and blood and you stand off and you kind of like rub him off the bottom of his shoes Did you just bit. goomba stomp a guy <laughs> i was kind of picturing it like um you know bruce lee doing the whole slow-mo 
Wahoo! <laughs> no, you know when he does, he, do, he, he yeah, essentially yeah. does that, yeah. and it's just like that little turn that he does. It's like he's clearly just, yeah. It was that just half arc sized, so less lean, more mean. So, the rest of you look and see Kerchak just jump on a guy's head. And before you, there are two unconscious figures. The bear just goes, Rah! and <laughs> if you, if you, if you think that there is a little <laughs> in that, then you're absolutely correct. Oh, uh, yes, I speak bear. <laughs> I don't speak bear. Give me a couple of levels, I might. Well. <laughs> I uh, come back out of bear shape. I'm immediately searching everywhere around here, looking for anything of interest or importance. Okay, okay. Um, Knowing that they're not going to wake up for a while. Okay, so Rahal, you drop out of bear, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, Volgus, roll me investigation, please. And whoever wants to search this little makeshift area, investigation. Um, me too, but I want to do it with detect ma magic on. Okay. While they're doing that, I'd probably want to tie up the uh, the people. Yep, fair enough. You do that. Just an eight. Five. I'll help go check, tie up the people. And I want that hand axe. <laughs> yeah, you take the hand axe. It's more of like a uh, a hatchet, a tomahawk. It's very, very rudely uh, constructed, uh, crudely even, not rudely constructed. It's not got dicks <laughs> on it. Um, <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. It will <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> um. So yeah, there's. It, it's very. It's basically a stick and a bit of metal they found and, and sharpened, <laughs> um, and just lashed on. Uh, so what was those investigation rolls again? Big, big numbers, I think. Yeah? Eight. Five. Mm. <laughs> you, but I do have to check magic. Okay. Um. Hmm. Give me a second, because there is a thing. They all rise again as zombies. Rise from your graves. Guys, my dog just let out the most horrific fart. <laughs> Thanks for uh, sharing. If you, saw, I, if you saw a face, that's what that was. Um, Rahal, nothing in this immediate area is pinging your attention, but there's something just beyond the statue that you... It's, it's not necessarily a glow or anything, but it's like something tugging at you. Something... you like, there's something magical over here. Da. I'm getting closer. Okay, so just beyond the statue of of Strad, if it is indeed Strad, you see a um Strad von Fear. A grove of dead trees and shrubs with a huge misshapen tree at its core. Blood oozes like sap from its twisted trunk. And you see embedded in it is an axe. And it's the axe that's magical? The axe is like <laughs> That's a, I know. August. That. Uh, right. Does the Stu knows what I've? Well, Stu thinks he knows what this tree is. Uh, Volgus knows that this is a Gothius tree. Right. That's what it is. is this one of the trees you mentioned? Yes. That's. That's a vampire. Believe it or not. The blood. Uh, the what? The tree. It was a vampire. The tree turns into a vampire. The vampire turns into a tree. Well, the legend what? goes that someone staked a vampire through the heart and the blood seeped into the stake and the stake grew into the tree. Oh. This is why we don't stake vampires. We incinerate them with right. divine light. What would happen if you stake a vampire with a stake made from the tree that, be that was a stake that killed the vampire? I really don't want to find out. What about the axe? It's, it, it's I did. That's new special. to me. Well, Kojak, why don't you pull it out while we stand over here? Kojak, don't pull it out! I want to have a good look 
at the axe first and sort of, hmm, yes, hmm, quite. All right, okay. Um, you approach the tree and you can see now um, that just around the side of the tree, there's a there's skeletal remains, human skeletal remains, wearing um, very tattered, decayed leather armor. Um, but the the axe itself is a battle axe, and you can see hmm. that its handle is carved with leaves and vines. Hmm. But it is embedded in this tree trunk, as if someone has just has been attempting to cut down this tree. I'm gonna grab it. All right, okay. I would like a strength uh, uh, athletics check, if you would not mind. Mm-hmm. Are you still reading? Uh, probably not. It's been a while I tied people up. Uh, sure. That's going to be yeah. rage tying. <laughs> I may have accidentally snapped wrists. Um, uh, they didn't need them anyway. Uh, 24. Yeah, okay, so you give it a couple of tugs. It is in there tight, and you can see that the tree has sort of um, grown around it a little bit, but um, you managed to pry it free, and you can feel that there's something about this act which is... um. No, it's not your average axe. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. feels... You're expecting a hefty weight from a battle axe. You've, you've handled battle axes before. You know what they feel like. This is half as heavy as a normal battle axe. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I can get as much momentum with this one. What's your alignment? Um, chaotic good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's always an intimidating question. <laughs> Isn't it just? Mm. It never comes up, but then when it does. Yeah, we don't have an identify spell in the party either. No, don't. But I'm going to allow, like we do with Curry, and you can take a, a rest with it and find out what it is. I mean, yeah. that's how it works normally, but identify means you can find out things like curses and things like that. Oh, I get you. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the the way that it works in Korean is the way it works in the book, but identify is to find out hidden properties, mm-hmm. gotcha. things like that. I got gotcha. you. It's like reading the blurb versus reading a synopsis. Got gotcha. you. All right. So, well, we could ask our friends, our very broken limb missing friends about. I have an idea this. of how we can get them to at least. Consider talking to us once they wake up. Do you like to share with the group? We burn down their god. While he's talking about that, I'm attaching this new axe to the other side where um, his axe axes. Mm. So I'm being framed by these axes. Beautiful. You cut a striking figure. Oh, you could dip axe on each side. (laughs) <laughs> and the Dual battle axes. Battle axes are very... Are they great axes? But is this Diablo 3? Yeah. Yeah. Just covered in axes. Oh, rub it in, yeah. by the way. Mm-hmm. Your barbarian's <laughs> covered in axes. Sorry, who broke their axes on purpose? I was doing it for the great good, don't at me. Uh-huh. The greater good. Greater good. good. Um, right. so... I, I for Groot? I'm go, gonna wait until they wake up at this point. Drag them over so that they're, like, within view of the... Mm-hmm. Of both the the statue and the tree. Yeah, okay. Um, as they do that... Um, Maybe get Kochak's Kochak. help to drag them. As the, mm-hmm. uh, as the captives are waking up and Volgus and Rahal are leaning over them, getting ready to interrogate them, you hear a whisper. A deep voice carried on the wind. Oh, boy. Long have I waited, it says... For one who is worthy, my spear hungers for blood. Retrieve it and rule these mountains in my stead, just like the mighty warriors from the early days of the Whispering Wall. And you feel yourself being drawn to one of the cairns that circles the top of this mount- this hill. Um, is it one of those things where it, I can 
hear it sort of all around in my head. I, I yeah. can't discern a difference. Right, so it's I'm definitely in my head. Um, nobody, nobody else can hear it, right? No, no. It, it was literally just in Kerchak's head. Um, everyone else is kind of at the minute preoccupied with the uh, the captives and um, uh, I am not. I'm staring in the space. Okay, Meryl <laughs> is just out of it. On standby. <laughs> I'd like to have a look at the one it's drawing me to mm-hmm. before doing any decision making. Yeah, it looks like any of the other kinds. No other discernible markings at all. No. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, vulgar. Close enough. Yes. I don't suppose you know anything about. Any of uh, this. This place. Uh. Dungeon Master? Mm? Do I know anything about this place? Not really. Okay. You just know that it, it's a, a hill. That's It's a hill big enough to have a name. I'm um, afraid not. No. <laughs> Why do you ask? <laughs> uh. Just a. Just a thought. Um, is it common for I don't know ah uh, voices in your head? Um, do you? Um, more common than you think, but it's never a good thing. Mm, that's a shame. Why? Uh, I think something's talking to me. And I just gesture to where I was led by the voice in my head. I just turn to Rahal. Don't look at me. Well, does he usually hear voices in his head? I'm. No, I don't think so. Then. What's causing this voice in his head? Because it's not... I've been in Barovia long enough to know that voices in your head is never a good thing. Well, the weapon is magical. Something about a spear. I'm going to start digging in that... um, Digging in that cairn. (laughs) What did the voice say? Something about waiting for a while. Uh, something about a spear. Um, something about like being really cool. <laughs> All right. So as you're talking about this, you see Meryl uh, watching Kerchak. She suddenly snapped back into reality, and she watched Kerchak point towards the can, uh, and she's heard like bits of it in and out as she was fading um, she just walks straight up to the can and attempts to push the, the rock at the front of it away I need you to make an athletics check okie dokie oh. uh, I don't think three is going to do it frankly <laughs> no. I mean seven seven <laughs> Oh my god. See so you watch. I subtracted instead of added. <laughs> <laughs> you watch almost in horror as Meryl walks straight up to this can that you've. you sure you heard a spooky voice come from and just like. She's just trying to put her back against it. She's trying to kick against it, push it. She does that thing where she pushes and her feet fall and she kind of goes. That's <laughs> a. Uh... Never a good idea to break into a grave. She's quite a distance below us, right? Oh, the cans on top of the hill. The cans are on top, yeah. Ah, like right. they're circling the top. I just in my head go, "Can you hear me? Can you hear?" <laughs> you hear the voice. Just says, "Waste no time, great hero." Retrieve my weapon. 
I thought you were a weapon. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking weapon. <laughs> not that not that you can have too many, I'm just saying. Not it this may be the first time one's spoken to me. So you know. Bit dubious. No response. Okay. Can I Apparently, try pushing I'm... on the cairn again? Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. Alright! I got, uh, 20. 20, okay. Um, so all the pushing, she's kind of, uh, Meryl has kind of made like a little divot now, she's got some purchase, and she's starting to roll away the stone blocking the front of the cairn. I mean, if I don't want to look what's inside, we should probably act now and stop her. I'm really interested though, and the voice says so. <clears throat> I mean... Look, the weapon just wants the big guy. It won't care about me. <laughs> yeah, keep going then. <laughs> <laughs> you watch for about... Going. It takes her about ten minutes to roll this stone away from the, the After entrance. a little while, I imagine I'd go over and just... Yeah. I don't. No, you should stay away. Um, so. I shoo him away if he comes over. <laughs> you do, and the, the stone rolls back a bit, and you're like, ah, no, go away! <laughs> <laughs> um, so it does take you about 10 minutes to open this can. Once you do, inside you can see um, basically a bundle of moldy bones, but resting atop is a long um, spear, um, as if fresh as if the day it was made it's so no sign of age or decay upon it um do i recognize this can i do like a history check lurk check uh you don't really know anything about up here this is an area where you didn't really go can i observe it <laughs> What do I observe on the spear? Okay. Does it have any characteristics? Um, so you look at this spear, and there's a... Um, it appears to be spiked at both ends, and there's smaller barbs at the tail end, but at the um, the head of the spear, it's like a um, an arrowhead, but very large. So it's got that leaf shape. Um, you know, like Indian and Persian spears were like leaf-shaped. Yeah. Um, and it's wrapped with leather um, and cord, but the head of the spear looks blood-stained. Huh. Can I, like, look through the dead guy's pocket? There's, there's nothing left. It was... Uh, the person who was buried here was a shroud with just the spear, so it's just tattered cloth and moldy bones. I assume at this point we've all seen that Meryl's opened this again. Yeah, yeah, because it took a long time. I imagine you all just stood there like... Uh -huh. I'm 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 going to cast a detect good and evil. Can right. I make a puppet out of the skull and start talking to Kolchak? You um, go to pick up the skull and it crumbles in your hands. <sighs> but how could you take that away from me? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you done Sorry. that before? Haven't we had moments like that? Before? It was very old. Um, not okay. yet, to my knowledge, have I done that. But it does sound like something I would do, so maybe. <laughs> I'm fairly sure. I don't know. I'm sure if you haven't done it, you will. <laughs> um, detect good and evil, yeah? Yeah. Well, apparently evil and good. Oh, whichever. I prefer good and evil. That flows better. Yeah. Um, I think that's exactly why it's the, the, the way around. I mean, I feel like it's alphabetical. Let me just check a thing. Okay. Is it good? Is it evil? It is e neither good nor evil. Huh. Let's turn to Kerchak. Well, apparently I was wrong about not every, about every voice in your head being bad, because I can't see anything wrong with that spear. I grab it. Okay. You're welcome. And again, like the axe, there's something special about this spear. Hmm. You're not quite there's sure what it is. About this spear. I'm not quite sure what it is. But there's something. There's something. <laughs> I get dibs on the next magical weapon. 
All I got was this dick tomahawk. <laughs> I went to Barovia and I like go. <laughs> <laughs> it was a dick tomahawk. Okay, uh, Jamie, at the end of the session, I will let you know. I'll um, mm-hmm. After, I will send you the dates for your cool, cool. weapons. Um, but you now have two people who are slowly waking up, find themselves bound and gagged. <sighs> I want to uh, go over to them and mm-hmm. say, it's good of you to join us again. You're going to do this quickly. Where are the rest of you based? They just stare at you. I just click my fingers and former Chirgy set fire to the straw. You see them kind of look with a, a fear in their eyes for a moment. Before one of them goes, <laughs> we were going to set fire to that anyway. <laughs> Thank you. From behind, that one axe comes down on the shoulder. <laughs> and what of the tree behind? What do you think of that? It's a god. I'd like to create a flaming sphere in front of it and just drill it into the tree. Okay, you do. And they kind of... uh... (laughs) That as well, I show them that the axe that I used is the axe from the tree. They just walk walk up into their field of vision and say nothing. Just watch. Um, the, The woman that was speaking was focused on Volgus. As you approach, she turns and looks at you. You've returned. I have. Answer these men. Yes, my queen. And from far away, you can hear uh, Meryl go, Oh! (laughs) (laughs) Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Inwardly, Rahala's going, what the fuck? <laughs> Outwardly, she's going... <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just the one eye twitching. Where are you based? Where is your home? We're all over. Some in the woods, some in the swamp. Never near the towns. Where is your most sacred sites? You're on it. Are there any others? No. And point to Raoul. Tell me about her. She was sent to us to rule us from the land, to show us. Show you what? How how we can live eternal. How we can take this land. We can We can make it ours. Don't you want to make it yours? It is mine. Does anyone else want to ask anything? How's this test? And the one that hasn't been speaking, I just threw the head. (laughs) okay you just and you sort of like you don't even get the neck you just like bisect his head so there's just a jaw and a neck and Mm -hmm. like a tongue um and the woman next to him is just spattered with his blood and the top of his head like rolls past her and her eyes grow wide she is we were all fated to die i just cup her under the chin no one rules forever and just set fire to her head (laughs) Shit! The fuck? Okay. Um, as the flames like lick at her, she just screams, and it's such a long, piercing, horrific scream that lingers. As keep going. As it stops, and her body stops twitching, and she stops moving. Silence falls upon the hill, and you see. The, um, the effigy of Strahd is burning. You see the tree is burning. 
and behind you, a good feet away, you hear Meryl joins in the clapping. <laughs> I turn to look at the clapping. Before you, you see Strad von Zerovich. And that's why we're going to end it tonight. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> well, in his flame covered shirt. No, <laughs> fuck you. Do not ruin this. <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> I will fucking end you all. His slicked back hair with the frosted tips. No, there's not even frosted tips. Like, the whole thing is frosted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suffering. But, um, thank you all so much for, um, for welcoming us, welcoming us back after, um, our Christmas break. Uh, it was really good to be back, and I've enjoyed this a lot. You guys right, are the better. most murdery of my elbows, and I'm so proud of you. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for hanging out in chat, everybody that was here. Thanks for everyone who's watched, every lurker, every hoster, every follower. We appreciate it very, very much. Um, be sure to check it out on YouTube because this will go up um, next Wednesday on YouTube or tomorrow if you're a patron or a sub. Um, make sure to go to the Discord if you are a sub and there is a sub only channel. Let me know and I'll pop you in there. Um, make sure I'm to not in that. All no, you're not. I need to put you in there. Um, uh -huh. Make sure to follow us all on Twitter. Um, we all do really cool stuff. I'm streamer. Stu is DM for Mondays on this channel. Marissa is a comics badass. She colours them. She does all sorts. She's a fucking wizard. She bops some art knowledge. Um, Lydia is a fabulous human being who also plays a lot of D&D &D and does cool things. And Jamie is Jamie. I exist. <laughs> no. <laughs> With so many puns. It's, I mean, you know. And now three magic weapons. Three magic weapons. Three. Four Four well, I mean, huh? um, what's his, his axe plus one. isn't, uh, well, I mean, it's not really magic, though. It's just a plus yeah. one. I mean, it it's counts, shiny. but it's like, it, it doesn't count. You know? But yeah, um. You know who else has a plus one isn't really a magic item? Shut up. Um, <laughs> we will catch you, not next week, the week after for the next session of Bike Club and you can find out just what the big man wants himself. Um, so we'll see you then. Have a great time until then. We'll see you soon. Bye.